Society of the Snow has just been released on Netflix and I gave it a watch last night and pfft, my god, what a movie it was. I was blown away by it in all ways possible. Focusing on Flight 571 that crashed in 1972 in the Andes mountain region, this movie followed the crash from the perspective of a Uruguayan rugby team that were amongst those that were stranded. Within this video, I thought I'd share my thoughts and opinion on the movie whilst also delving into the true events and comparing it to the Netflix film. So let's get into it. Here is Society of the Snow versus the true events and a review of the movie. Just to let you know, this video will contain spoilers. My review of the film. Honestly, I was taken back by this movie. I wasn't really familiar with the air crash that took place before putting it on, but when finding out that this was based on true events, it made the movie hit even harder. After doing some research, I saw that the creator did extensive research on what happened, spoke to survivors of the crash and family members of those that didn't survive, so that they could get as accurate of a depiction as possible. And I think you can really tell that through the nuanced details that were present with the characters' behaviours. This didn't just feel like an adventure and survival movie. This felt like a movie where the characters were real and even after escaping, there was no true happy ending, showing the long-term effects of experiencing something like this. Having the story told to us through the perspective of Numa was something which I thought was the perfect choice. I didn't for a second question that he wouldn't make it, but when he did finally succumb to the conditions, hearing his voice knowing that he didn't make it was something which almost allowed him to be a voice for the people that didn't survive. At least, that's what I got from it. It would have been easier and maybe more traditional to have seen the movie from the perspective of one of the survivors, maybe Nando, but what happens with that is that you may forget the people that didn't make it. But by having Numa be the voice, the people that didn't make it have a constant presence throughout the movie and are never forgotten because his voice carried the story. So it was a well thought out and respectful approach. The physical transformation of the characters was something which was utterly haunting. They looked like they'd been stranded for 72 days and they were completely unrecognizable from the start. So it was very realistic in its approach. Even the mindset of the characters changing over the course of the movie was something which felt so natural. Seeing how what was once a disturbing thought of having to consume somebody that you once knew, sat beside and was comforting in their final moments, to then being able to push that thought deep within and then eating with the sole intention of surviving was something which was harrowing to watch, but also something which you couldn't question because you don't know what it would be like. Numa being the last person to eat and then caving in eventually marked the point of no return for it, and the shot where the bones were just lying all around the plane was something which had a true sense of heartbreak to it, because the hiding of them showed that they were deeply against what they did, but they knew that they had to do it if there was any chance of them being able to survive. The environment was the enemy of this story, and it truly felt like it was. It felt harsh, bitter, cold, empty unforgiving and like a blanket of nothingness where you could easily get forgotten and actually become invisible. There would often be shots where some of the survivors would be traveling where it would cut to us being able to view the entire space and you genuinely couldn't see them at all. And it was a smart way of showing us just how hostile and dangerous the place was and that you're quite literally swallowed up by the environment. Even when Nando and Roberto got to the top of the mountain and thought that they were only a short walk away from Chile, seeing the sheer amount of empty space where no life would be able to survive or thrive naturally was something which just made me feel the fear and disappointment that they had within them after gazing upon it. The ending of the movie was something which I found deeply moving. Seeing the survivors reunited with their families after they presumed that they were dead was a moment which did make me slightly emotional. Also, seeing them all together in the hospital in one room whilst Numa was closing out the movie with the voiceover, stating how they were all questioning why it happened and why they specifically made it back over others before the movie cut to black provided the powerful finish that it was teeing itself up for. With the real photos of the crash site being played over the credits, it was the final thing that was incorporated which highlighted once again that this was real and actual individuals suffered through the disaster resorting to things that were unthinkable in order to survive. This movie really did take my breath away and surprised me with how good it was and the realistic nature that it managed to truly get across the screen. The harshness of the terrain, the claustrophobia when inside the debris of the plane, and the bitter coldness that was present. It was remarkable. I felt cold whilst watching it and like I wanted to escape. 
I would also say that this movie felt so long, but in a good way. The survivors were trapped for 72 days, and this movie really got that across as it felt long and like so much happened, adding to the actual experience of watching it. Society of the Snow is most certainly worth a watch, and I'd be intrigued to see what you think once you do, so comment your thoughts below. Now let's take a look at the movie versus the true events and how it actually unfolded. Let's look at the expedition and rescue first. When it came to the rescue being depicted on screen, we saw Nando, Roberto, and Antonio trek to the top of the mountain that was closest, and after trekking up there, they saw that there was no greenery in sight like they'd hoped. They were under the impression that the Chilean countryside would be over the mountain due to where they felt they crashed. This was something which was present in real life too. The co-pilot of the plane, before dying, said how they'd flown over Carrico, which would have been close to the countryside. However, they were a lot further into the Andes than what the pilot presumed, and they were around 50 miles away from the countryside. Within the movie, after this realization, both Roberto and Nando set off, with Antonio going back down the mountain in order to preserve the food supply for them. From there, there was a 10-day hike that followed when Nando and Roberto eventually stumbled across somebody where they threw a rock across the river with a node, which they returned, which contained information on the fact that they were survivors of the Uruguayan air crash and that there were other survivors further back. From here, we saw the rescue mission take place and a helicopter come in to retrieve all of the survivors. Most of this was actually true to the events. However, there were some slight differences. Within reality, once Nando got to the top of the summit, he did vocalize how he wasn't going to be going back to the plane because he didn't see the point, and he realized that it was their only hope at attempting survival, pressing on and hoping. During the 10-day trek, it was said that Nando and Roberto pressed on because they felt like they were getting closer to signs of life, such as there being a campsite nearby and a herd of cows. Within the movie, it was one person who was seen to have found them across the river, when according to true events, it was actually three men that were across the other side of the river. Whilst on the other side of the river, as Nando and Roberto were trying to get their attention, the noise of the water drowned out their voices, and it meant that they went unheard. This was until one of the men saw them and shouted that he'd be back tomorrow. The next day, they shared information by attaching paper to a stone and throwing it across, and then once the severity of the situation was understood, the individuals had to travel 10 hours to the closest police station so there was a further trek that took place. One thing that was different at the end of the movie and with the rescue was the fact that only some of the survivors were taken back when the helicopters arrived, and some had to stay for another night at the wreckage. This was because of the weight limit due to the altitude, so seven survivors had to stay behind with four volunteer rescuers for one final night on the mountain where they were then rescued the next day. The permission to use their bodies Within the movie, we saw that there was a reluctance to turn to cannibalism from the survivors to start with. However, once the individuals realized that there was a slim chance that they were going to be rescued anytime soon, they came to an agreement that they would allow each other to feed off of them when the time came when they died. This was something which did actually happen in reality too. After rationing all of their food, which they found in cases which consisted of crackers, chocolate, nuts, and alcohol, it ran out after only a week. At first, they turned to the leather from the plane seats, shoes, and belts, but then after realizing that that wasn't sufficient enough, and as well, after coming to the conclusion that the rescue efforts had grinded to a halt and stopped, they did what they did in the movie, and gave each other permission to use their bodies if they died. Out of all of the survivors of the crash, everybody that did survive made the decision to consume the flesh. This was also a decision that wasn't taken lightly with many of the people there, and they only did it as a complete last resort, as some died after choosing with and sticking with not consuming. Many of the people were Roman Catholic, and some feared the prospect of damnation for doing so. But afterwards, a priest assured them that they wouldn't face damnation for it. The Avalanche The avalanche that we saw taking place in the movie was something which actually happened in reality. An avalanche was said to have hit the wreckage during the night whilst they were all sleeping, so it was slightly different to when it occurred in the movie, but sadly, eight people died because of it. It filled the plane up, so there was only around one meter of room at the top. Following this, Nando put a pole through one of the windows in order to get air into it so that they wouldn't run out of air, which was an actual act that we saw taking place during the movie. The survivors spent three days inside of the plane due to the blizzard, which meant that they were stuck inside with the survivors and the people that they sadly lost during the avalanche. Something which again we saw taking place during the movie and must have been horrific. 
I feel this movie did a good job at depicting the harsh conditions, the crash, the mindset of the survivors and the ones that didn't survive, whilst also staying true to the events that occurred. Something which I think made this movie feel all the more real when watching, and it added to the upsetting, powerful nature of it. So, there you have it. Society of the Snow vs. The True Events and a review of the movie.